the best way I could think of was a cartoon that was in a New Yorker magazine last year. This little boy is looking up at his father, and he says, Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be a former president. <laughs> well, I am deeply grateful to this wonderful institution, but I have to say that there was one time in my life when I was even more grateful, and that was the end of January in 1980 when I was president, and I called uh, then Prime Minister Joe Clark and uh, thanked him and Flora MacDonald for having orchestrated one of the most remarkable rescue operations in history. Uh, that was to approve the issuing of false passports and visas representing Canada to a group of neighbors in America, six of them, who were hiding in your embassy. And this... <laughs> this was the first time in the history of my country, perhaps any country, when every member of the U.S. Congress personally extended their thanks to the people of Canada for extraordinary friendship and heroism. It's never been done before, and it has never been done since. Uh, Ambassador Ken Taylor and his wife Pat and the heroic members of the Canadian Embassy staff made it possible for six Americans to come back to freedom. It was uh, many years later that any acknowledgement was made that the United States was involved at all in that heroic action. I saw the movie Argo recently, Ken, and I was taken aback by its distortion of what happened <laughs> because almost everything that was heroic or courageous or innovative was done by Canada and not by the United States. <laughs> But at that time, I think, perhaps more than ever before in history again, there was an expression of, I'd say, a love affair between two neighboring countries. And I'm very grateful that that love affair still exists to a great degree between the United States and this wonderful country of Canada.